All right, guys, it's been a productive day, and we've got a variety of issues on these surgical tables that we've run through. And uh, let me show you, while I got a few of them open, the kind of things that you probably run into. Let's take a look. I've got a, four or five different types of tables down here, and every single one of them has different issues. All right, here we go. We got the classic Skytron 3003 Impulse. This guy had a few issues. First off, if you guys see this twist lock plug, take a moment, scoot the boot back. All right, so when taking a look at these guys, underneath the boot is the hidden surprises. So take a look there. You can see my strain relief is damaged and missing fastener and it's no longer on the outer sheathing of the cable so it is not acting as a real strain relief anyway that's for the twist lock plug make sure that your ground which is the middle make sure that the banana in there is spread far enough to make good contact so that you get a good electrical safety this one here the cord has to be shoved further up in past the strain relief and clamped down on the outer sheathing but that was not the only issue this guy back on we'll get to him in just a moment so when we were doing our final checkouts on this table one of the things that I noticed is that the tilt was not calibrated whatsoever it was uh, going towards the head and it was also tilting to the side which means these older tables are all calibrated on the axis with micro switches so there's an eccentric cam and the micro switches will activate for left and right on the sides of the cam. And what you have to do is the shielding has to come off, which they're loose on both these tables, which means lock tight. So you have to go in and adjust each. You have to adjust the width of both micro switches and then you have to adjust the height of the micro switches. And that changes their engagement on the cam, which adjusts where the table tilts. So we got it finally calibrated. It took, you know, several, several attempts. Uh, one person working a hand control while I'm sitting there and uh, goofing around with it. So we finally got it calibrated. It's beautiful, it's perfect. And this is our calibration result. As good as it gets. These beauties right here. Steris 3085, 3080 series. Wonderful tables, known problems right here with the port. And this port here was missing its fastener, so it was weeble wobbling in the breeze. The crown at the top was missing half of its fastener, so it was canted. If this drops in the middle of a procedure, then this whole thing's gonna crash and you're gonna have issues. So always check your crown fasteners, check all the fasteners up here in uh, the port. Make sure that they're good to go. Hand control works beautifully. We went down in the base, inspected the batteries. The batteries will need to be changed out, um, but that is next, gonna be happening very soon. And that re returns this table to a functioning matter. Also, and check the AC plate because they're known for being defective, uh, especially with loose power cords. We have another. 3085 over here. This 3085 has got some newer batteries for the 28 amp hour batteries or 26 amp hour, but the control batteries themselves, you can see right there, 2014 it says on them. Uh, so the control batteries sit right next to those ones. They all have to be changed out at the exact same time. So we are changing out the batteries on this guy and it should be good to go. Holy cow, take a look at this beauty. This is what happens when batteries get a little bit old. And this comes from the spine table or the Jackson table. This is a Mitsuho OSI spine table. This side over here has micro switches which detect its rotational uh, position, but it also has a uh, clamping brake, which it's uh, are on the perimeter of a round object and it clamps down on it and that locks this guy down. On this end, this is the motor drive head for the 
the table. And what we were experiencing on this side is that it would only go a few degrees and then the other side it would go really far out. If you notice that it doesn't go equidistant tilting, that means that you have to stop everything that you're doing. We removed the table. As you can see the table sitting over there. And we grab onto it and run the motor and see exactly where it stops because sometimes the table could be binding it. So this is free motion without the table and come to find out it needs some adjustment. You would adjust it by centering it, especially down at that end. And then we go through it and loosen up the lock and allow this to free dangle, all right? So once it's straight up and down, you will get rotation lock. That tells you that it's centered and ready to go. And now, it is fully functional. So it's currently running off of batteries. This is the one that we changed the batteries in. So at this end over here, we have the AC input and that's the power supply. And then we've got the charge controller over here and down at the foot end of the bed. Down there is the batteries underneath that cover. So we changed out the batteries and this table here is going to be good to go. You can hear it rotating, okay? I want you guys to hear something. See how that is just floating in the breeze? And see how it locked. It locked like that because it thinks that the patient is tilted and it's a safety feature. So if that happens, what you can do is loosen up your lock over here and let's center this guy like so so it detects that this guy is straight up and down I'm going to lock it back down and now nothing <laughs> uh, sorry guys brain fart had to release the rotation safety lock. That way there, we can center it. So go ahead and just let dingle hopper there. There you go. Okay, so we want that yoke down there and this yoke here to be almost parallel. There we go. We're gonna cant it a little bit because when you place the flatbed carbon fiber platform on there, you want them to be at the exact same angle, whatever that angle is. So that's the spine table it for the most part seems to be good to go we have a brick told table right here and this is the operon and it's locked of course it is so this table here it had a problem right here in the cord and one of the things that you guys should know about these guys is there's a lock collar right here and if you loosen up the set screw you can remove the cord from the remote the remote is technically fine it's just it gets shorts like right here at where I always tell you guys where the soft material meets the rigid material that's where you're always going to expect problems but the other complaint that users had is that this table the side controls do not function well normally this is your emergency handle that you pull it out and then it becomes a manual hydraulic pump and from there all these side controls do is they activate your function. So let's say you want to do head up, foot up, whatever. Go ahead and show them how we do it. So you, you select your function, you start pumping. Look at that. There it goes. It's moving. Okay, now select a different function. Okay, notice how this one here stopped and that one over there is moving. So it switched the hydraulic cylinders, the, the solenoids, they switched over and now a different function is working. So this table is really low. We raised it up. We tested out every function. The uh, kidney lift was up. We lowered that down through manual hydraulic mode. So we tested all the functions on the side control. It does function. You just have to, this is usually an indicator that staff needs uh, more instruction on their equipment because that emergency mode right there can really help you sometimes. So, but this table is good to go. We're gonna let it charge up.
this guy over here, I've got a 4085. Um, first off, these things are infamous for having defective or broken remotes. You see the LCD panel is cracked. The only problem with this being cracked, the remote is fully functional, is that it instructs you in order to unlock the brakes, you have to press and hold for three seconds. And it, it tells you that in a little readout, but if it's a cracked readout, you don't know that, so they think that the whole table is defective. There is the emergency remote, you can see it right there. It does not have an LCD, thankfully they thought of that, and it stows down in the base, which is probably a horrible idea because that's a really gunky place, but it's there nonetheless if they need it. One of the other things that you should be aware of on these tables, not my favorite function. Oops, sorry. I gotta squeeze through, guys. One of the things you have to be really aware of are these overlapping shrouds, okay? You can see right there, that's one that's not damaged. This one right here is damaged. This needs to be replaced before this table can be used. This is a catch point. Things like even hands or something, if they do a table slide and your hands down there, that you just lost your fingers. Okay, so this table, all these protective shrouds have to be repaired before it can go back into service. Uh, so this one is a table slide plus all your normal functionalities. But uh, Sarah's 4085, not my favorite table in the world and for reasons like this. But nonetheless, this guy's going to be good to go with a new hand control and replacement side. 3085. God, I do love these tables. Down here, 3085s have this problem. You would think that a fastener, like on the brake here, this is what, an inch or so? And look how it's bent. Take a look at that. It's starting to shear in the back. That is a massive diameter of a fastener, and you would think the shear strength on that alone would, would damage, if anything, right up here where it mounts. But no, they always break off right down here. And I'm not completely sure why. I don't know the hardness of, this, of that metal. But this usually happens when these tables are run over. There's the brake foot right there. When they come and go out of elevators, they just naturally smash into things. And there's a lot of inertia. This is this is all cast. These, these are very heavy tables. So when you get that much inertia moving in a line, and then all of a sudden you hit an uneven surface, those catch, and when they catch, they break. So that's why the feet have to be adjusted correctly. This table here needs other parts and we'll probably inspect the batteries at that time uh, before we release it for service. But the table itself is in really good condition except for those brake feet. So it's the little things that really matter. Oh, squeeze. All right. And I have another Stairs 4085 over here. This one here does need a hand control because this is the original owner of the crack screen LCD. But uh, as far as I can tell, this table seems to be working absolutely fine. Um, it does probably need a full inspection once we get the hand control, but without a hand control, a proper one, it's useless to even proceed because if the users can't use it, then uh, it can't go into service anyway. So 4085, 3085, Jackson, Spine Table, Operon, Burktold, 4085, 3085, 3085, and one of my favorites right here. We got the 3003 Skytron series. So, it's been a busy day. Uh, out of all these tables, we will probably get four, maybe five of them up and going in probably the next hour. Um, diagnosing, because uh, we don't know what's going on. We don't know the history on these devices. It's usually the most complex part of the gig and we're walking in you see previous repairs or you know lack of maintenance uh, all sorts of stuff but uh, we, we got to be really thorough on everything before we quote it out and before you know we start changing out parts but uh, I think we're gonna get four to five tables up and going here in the next few minutes and uh, clear out some of the space <laughs> anyway guys thanks for watching